In this lesson for Nick Software Sharpener Pro 3.0, we'll take a look at the user interface and how it fits within Apple's Aperture image editing software. To access the user interface from Aperture, go to Images, Edit With, and come down to Sharpener Pro 3.0 Output Sharpener. This will open the interface and as you see if you if you're familiar with other Nick software products you'll see that the interface looks very familiar to you we've tried to standardize all of our user interface and all of our products in all five of our products now to have the same exact look and feel so that users will know where all the tools are all the viewing modes and everything's convenient and, and familiar to you in the upper left we have three different viewing modes we have single image view the split preview which gives you the ability to move this line back and forth to see before and after and also a side-by-side -side preview you can in single image view you can have access to the preview checkbox for before and after and then there are several different modes you can see the sharpened image the sharpening soft proof which gives you a very good look at what the image might look like once it's sharpened and the effect overlay and effect mask based on the U-point technology and selectively editing sharpening and adding sharpening so that you can see visually what areas of your photograph are being affected and what areas are not being affected. And then we have access to the select tool, the zoom tool, the pan tool or hand tool, and also the background color options that you have for changing the the way you like to visualize your images while you're working. Coming around the corner now we see that we have the next feature which is the add new preset. This is a great new tool in that you can add up to 10 presets that you customize and name based on different output sharpening and creative sharpening selections and from that it allows you to have one click solutions for your sharpening in the future. Under output sharpening we have several options. Display which allows us the ability to sharpen for VGA projectors for example or if your image will be used on a monitor such as maybe on a website so that visually you can uh, adjust your sharpening. And then there's also several other options. Inkjet allows you the ability to set up specifically for the inkjet output device with viewing distance, different paper types, printer resolutions, in this case I might be working with a 2400 printer for my desktop, um, maybe a luster paper. You can also go to continuous tone which gives you the ability to uh, select different types of distances. Again, auto is the one that we would highly recommend. And you set different DPI based on what the printer would be using. So you check with your printer, find out the DPI that the image will be printed at, and you can adjust for that. You also have halftone, so you can select, again, the viewing distance and the type of paper. If it's going to be a newsprint, or maybe it's going to be a coated or an uncoated stock or a high gloss stock. And again, you have access to the printer resolution, lines per inch, based on what the printer sets up for that particular output, for that use. And then a hybrid device, where it's a technology is a sort of a combination of inkjet and halftone together giving you the ability to uh, fine-tune this sharpening specifically for these different devices. You also have creative sharpening which gives you the ability to sharpen based on specific areas of the picture such as the top slider of course is the strength of the output sharpening but then we have the structure slider which gives us the uh, ability to sharpen for increasing the appearance of texture local contrast which gives us the ability to sharpen small fine edges or lines in our photographs and then focus which is a great new tool it's an adaptive sharpening based on an image where you might have one area slightly out of focus and one area in focus where that software then will adapt the sharpening to apply slightly more sharpening in the areas out of focus than the areas in focus so it's very very intuitive it's very clever uh, very in-depth algorithm that was written specifically for that and when you move to the right to in introduce that focus you also have the option to move to the left to remove it and introduce blurring into the picture if you need to and then of course we also have the option of selective sharpening 
two different options there. First option is the patented U-point technology where we can add a control point, place it in our image, and we can sharpen based on that specific area. We also have color ranges where we have the ability to go in and pre-select different colors that we want to change the amounts of sharpening. For example, if we wanted to increase sharpening in the green area to 100% and maybe in the pink area we want to soften sharpening so we can bring that slider down to 50% wherever you like. But you have these options so that you can set this up to um, sharpen specifically or remove sharpening specifically from certain objects or subjects within your pictures. And then the loop tool is exactly that. As we move around the cursor on the live images this follows us around or as I double click the live image to go to 100 percent the loop tool then becomes a navigator that you can click and drag to view through the throughout the image so you can check focus on any area in the picture and when you're finished you click save and you go back to aperture back into the editing system and you're ready to continue your editing